In the last recording, we were writing some code that would allow us to figure out if a given point x, y was within the orange square, but outside of the blue circle. The code we were using to accomplish this is shown here. You can see that we have some fairly clean code here, but one of the problems is magic numbers. What I mean by magic number is something like the number one here that is sprinkled throughout the code, but it's not clear what that number represents or if it even represents the same thing every time it's used. That's called a magic number and there's some problems with that. Some of the reasons you would want to avoid magic numbers like this is that it clarifies the meaning. So when you see one, you don't know what it means, but if we were to rename that as a variable radius, you would understand what that number meant. It also makes it easier to modify. Let's say later we decide that the radius should be two instead of one. We will not have to hunt through all the code to figure out every place that we hard-coded the value of one. We can just change the variable at the very beginning. This also makes it easier to do parameterization. If later we wanted to find the area of the circle, we would have the radius so we could just put that into a formula. Here's the newly modified code that will do the geometry check. There's been a few changes made. The first is, of course, eliminating the magic numbers inside the code. But we've also modified this so it's no longer a script, but a function. A function is a way of adding to the MATLAB language. So just like there is a sign function, now there is a geometry check function that will take these five inputs and display a string if it is in the square but not in the circle. We've also simplified the function on the inside. Notice that now we're making two function calls to subfunctions that we'll cover later. These are going to return a binary as conventionally all is functions do. And then I am naming the outputs flag something because flag is a convention that I use so that I know I'm dealing with a binary value. Because these are well-named variables and simple function calls, the next line of code is easy to understand. It's asking, is it not in the circle and in the square? If so, we display the, the code or the string as we were supposed to. I've left some debugging in here for now that says if we are not what we're looking for, we're going to at least display flag in circle and flag in square so we can understand which part of the test failed. Now let's look at the sub-functions. These are under, easy to understand because they're commented so we understand what the inputs are. And also notice that I've used the line break ellipses so that I could break the lines and align up the parallel parts of the, the code. So we have xc minus x squared directly over yc minus y squared. It makes it very easy to see where the parallelism lies in that function. And if there was a mistake, it would show up very easily. Thank you, and we will um, continue with this next week as we add test vectors and graphical debugging. Thank you.